because you were talking about I think how like our our brains like even our amygdala um, how we get into like fight or flight and stuff and how that even changes our breath right um, on either side of the brain um, and connected to the to the limbic system to the survival mechanism and to the emotions there are two little glands called amygdalas that are that are responsible for survival right so so they the way it works is when sensory information comes into the body it comes first to the hypothalamus which is like a like a router like a computer router that sends that information simultaneously to the thinking brain and to the amygdalas the pathway to the amygdalas is the shortest uh, so the amygdalas receive that information first and when they interpret that information as threat they respond in three very predictable ways right fight flight or freeze so it's a good thing to have amygdalas because they, they, they ensure survival, but there are a couple of problems with the amygdala. For one thing, they're really, really fast, um, but they're not very accurate. Phew. So when they interpret threats that are not a threat to our physical survival, like we, you, know, you and I are just having an argument, to the amygdala is, is danger, danger, danger. And so they go right into fight, flight, or freeze. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the problem, the further problem is that at the same time, they shut off communication to the thinking brain. So now we're like in DEFCON 1, you know, like waiting for this huge attack and we can't even think straight. Yep. So that's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So that's called the the amygdala hijack, right? So the amygdala hijack, our ability to choose how we're going to respond to the, uh, to the, to the threat or to the, to the situation. And they just go into those reactive modes. Our grandmothers knew intuitively what to do about this even before we understood that the the brain the, the brain science which is only like 30 years old uh, what would they tell us right when 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 you get upset count to 10 right? oh yeah yeah yeah. the amygdala hijack t- lasts eight to ten seconds oh really the, the actual hijack is eight to ten seconds how did they know that what else would they tell us take a breath right there, there's swamis in india that have that much control over their body that they can tell the heart to slow down and the heart will, right? They can actually mimic these states that are death-like, that sometimes you can't tell whether they're death or alive, dead or alive. Most of us aren't there yet, right? And, and we'll probably never have that kind of control over our bodies, but anybody can slow down the breath. Anybody can, right? And, and when, what happens when we slow down the breath, all it takes is a choice and a little bit of self-discipline. When we slow down the breath, take slow, deep breath, the heart has no choice. But to slow down, it has to. It doesn't have a choice. When the heart slows down, the body begins to relax. The nervous system begins to quiet down. Mm. And so, it, again, it all goes back to the breath. Yeah, I really do like that. And I think that's uh, good for people to hear and, and understand, like, hey, when, you, when something like that happens and you get straight into an emotional response, take that step back, take that breath, like slow it down and like allow your thinking brain to come back on and like be able to just kind of look at the situation and be like, how do I really want to react to that? 